by heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Full-Time Fantasy Show. FullTimeFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Full-Time Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Dr. Roto, get out the insurance cards, get out the copay. The office is open, my friends. All right, let's take a look at some news and notes, and then we will get to the week in review that I always do. So let's see. Sterling Shepard, practicing Monday. Please, Giants, please, I beg you, keep this kid off the field. We don't need it. We stink. Giants stink. So why do we need Sterling Shepard? We don't. Please. Don't want him playing. Evan Ingram, still not playing. That's good. Marlon Mack, Ian Rappaport is saying that he's not expected to play Week 12. We'll talk about that in in just a bit. Um, Let's see, anything else? Yes, I'm, I'm noticing here that David Johnson didn't touch the ball once. I told you guys not to play David Johnson. And Tyler Boyd. Had more catches than yards. By the way, Tyler Boyd cost me hundreds of dollars yesterday. I had a big old team that was firing on all cylinders in DK with the exception of Tyler Boyd. So, I mean, Tyler Boyd gives me 20 points. I'm easily winning, you know, four figures. Seriously. All right, let's get to the games of Week 11. Let's start it out with the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 playing the Redskins. So here's what I want to tell you. Dwayne Haskins is awful. I mean, it's really bad. It's it's criminally bad. And I'm I'm sitting there thinking to myself, there's no way it's going to get better. None. I know he threw two touchdowns. I get it. It was in severe garbage time. And I'm telling you, this guy is missing easy routes. The Redskins will go nowhere with him as their quarterback. Fact. Good news. Darius, guys look good. He did. He looked very good. And Terry McLaurin's good. Give him Cam Newton. Give him Andy Dalton. This team might have a chance. Give him Haskins. No chance. This is just one of those where they bought into the hype. For the Jets, Sam Darnold played very well. And he must love throwing to his tight end because Ryan Griffin exploded 5 for 109 in a touchdown. Jamison Crowder revenge narrative. We talked about that. 5 for 76. I always love when those revenge narratives come through. All right, let's look at the uh, Broncos against the Vikings. And this game, wow. I mean, if you're a Bronco fan, you're winning 20 nothing at halftime. You're feeling amazing. You are. You're feeling amazing. And then the Broncos just stopped playing in the second half. And the Vikings just started playing better. And Dalvin Cook did nothing. I mean, really, they did nothing. It was Stefan Diggs and Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. I told you the tight ends are going to be big in this game. I did. I told you Irv Smith may catch a touchdown. Did you play him? This is not a Dalvin Cook week, but the rest of the team played great. Now, I want to say this. Two things. Cortland Sutton, fantastic player. Tim Patrick looked really good. Noah Fant, love a Noah Fant. But... Watch that last play of the game again. The Vikings defender was literally pulling jerseys. Literally pulling jerseys. How do you not call that? I mean, come on. How do you not call that at the end of the game? It's terrible. I don't care if the Vikings win. I don't care. Seriously, I don't care either way. I I mean, I'm just rooting for players, not teams. I mean, I have friends who are Bronco fans. I have friends who are Viking fans. I'm happy for them or sad for them. But the truth is, I don't care. I just want to see a play where they're not pulling fans' jersey. That was a terrible no call. That was a terrible no call. If that was in Denver, they're calling that play. I don't know what got into the Falcons' defense, but I want some of it. They looked amazing. Sacking Kyle Allen, intercepting him. I mean, playing at the highest levels. And Kyle Allen looked terrible. Terrible. You know, everybody's like, well, I, you know, if you're like me, you don't like Cam Newton. Okay, we don't like Cam Newton. But Kyle Allen isn't the answer. With what I saw yesterday, not the answer. 
A lot of questions with him. If you play Brian Hill for the Falcons, Steve, you didn't read Steve, Steve Renner's article on full-time fantasy DFS, the ambush. He said not to play him, and he was right. But I hope you played Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones. Oh, man, were they great. And playing Matt Ryan was a very good play as well. Okay, the Jaguars and Colts. Sometimes you just don't understand the NFL. You just don't. Marlon Mack was running 14 carries, 109 yards, doing great. He gets injured. Jonathan Williams comes in. Now, I remember watching Jonathan Williams at the University of Arkansas, and he was a really good running back. He can't do anything right in the NFL. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. Let me look it up here. Please hold. Please continue to hold. I mean, this guy has been a, a failure for forever. So let's see. Buffalo to 94 yards in 2016. New Orleans in 2008, no yards. Indianapolis, 117 yards in one game. I mean, crazy. Crazy. Who would ever have thought this on 13 carries? Jaguars, look, it was good to see Nick Foles back. They're going to have better days ahead. But when you don't run the ball, you lose. When Leonard Fournette has 23 yards rushing, you lose. Simple. That's how it works. All right, the Bills-Dolphins. Now, I'll talk more about this on FNTSY. I'm going to tell you why Devin Singletary is, is not a fantasy super, superstar. But I love how Josh Allen's playing. I do. I love how John Brown is playing. And by the way, I gave you Patrick Laird. Did I not? Patrick Laird had over 11 points. I think he had 12 points. Did you play him on DK? We talked about it because the Buffalo, you can't, very good pass defense. I mean, I didn't see the Devontae Parker thing coming. That was shocking to me. The rest of it I saw. I told you guys Secchi was going to be bad, right? Buffalo's got a very good pass defense. Okay, Ravens, Texans. So when we talk about these games, I always try to think about the game script and the pathway. And I mentioned that the Ravens have a very good secondary between Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. And I told you that DeAndre Hopkins and Stills and Kuti were going to struggle. Now, Hopkins was reasonably good. He had 70, seven receptions for 80 yards, but none of the other guys could do anything. So, I mean, it became that Carlos Hyde was their best player. When Carlos Hyde's your best player and Deshaun Watson's throwing for under 200 yards, this game's over. The Ravens blitz them. And you know what? The Ravens are really hard to beat. You've got this great running quarterback. You've got a triple tight end offense. You've got two really good running backs in Ingram and Edwards. And they didn't even really use Marquise Brown. I mean, they really didn't even use him. So it is, I mean, what did Marquise Brown do? Two for 23? Didn't have to do anything. So really, really impressive. Speaking of impressive, Cowboys and Lions, Dak Prescott, absolutely impressive. 444 passing yards. And he didn't even throw anything to Amari Cooper. 3 for 38. It was Michael Gallup, who we love. Randall Cobb. Detroit always does poorly against slot receivers. Zeke Elliott was okay, not fantastic. Not fantastic. Had two touchdowns, but not a lot of yards. But speaking for Detroit, Bo Scarborough? Where did this come from? I mean, look, I call myself an astute fantasy expert. I didn't see Bo Scarborough coming anywhere. I could get on board with, with Driscoll. I can get on board with anything else that happened. But Bo Scarborough, I didn't see that one. Crazy, right? All right, speaking of crazy, I think that O.J. Howard is driving Bruce Arians crazy. Bruce, Jameis Winston throws the ball right to him. Howard bobbles it, puts it behind his back, and then it becomes, I don't know whether it's an interception or a fumble or both, I, whatever, I don't know. It was a nightmare. And then basically Jameis Winston throws four picks. The Buccaneers are not a bad team. They just have guys who are underperforming since severely. This game was a little closer than you would have thought by you looking at the last score. It was 27-17, and the Buccaneers were driving a couple of times. But Jameis throws, in, throws picks. They can't run the ball at all. And they can't throw the ball to Mike Evans. So 
How are you going to win when Marshawn Lattimore is not even playing? Kamara does enough. Michael Thomas has a good game, not a great game. I thought it could have been more. Jared Cook scores. We gave you that one, right? That was the biggest layup of the week. I think the 49ers are going to look at this game with the Cardinals and say this is the game that got us deep in the playoffs. They were losing. They were losing badly. Cardinals were all over this game, and the 49ers came back. Now, there was a late, late touchdown that probably pissed off a lot of people who were gambling on this game. But Jimmy Garoppolo led this team four touchdowns, 424 yards, and they didn't even run the ball. But Debo Samuel's a player. Kendrick Bourne, a player. Ross Dwelly, two touchdowns. Do you know why? Because the Cardinals are the worst team in the NFL against opposing tight ends. The worst. David Johnson, nothing. Kenyon Drake at least looked good. Johnson's done, by the way. Done. Sad, but true. All right, Bengals and Raiders. I said this game was going to go under. I didn't see how they were going to get to this point total because these are two teams who want to run the football. The Raiders want to run the football. They only throw when they can't. And the Bengals can't throw the football. I mean, Tyler Boyd, are you kidding me? Seriously, one catch for no yards? Auden Tate, I I hope this guy's alive. I feel badly because he's been a good player this year. But the Raiders were a better team. Jacobs was good. Waller was good. Renfro was good. They're just a better team. it It is gratifying to see Joe Mixon stepping up. Joe Mixon's not a bad player. Just plays on a bad team. All right. Patriots win ugly. Tom Brady doesn't throw a touchdown pass. Julian Elliman does. Brady threw 216 yards. Sony Michelle, 33 yards rushing. Julian Edelman, 53 yards receiving. I mean, I'll give credit to the Eagles defense, but man, this Patriot offense is bad. Now Rob Gronkowski said he has a he has an announcement to make. Anybody going to be shocked when he says he's coming back? I don't think so. I think he'd be shocked if he doesn't come back. Patriots are Super Bowl bound, and Brady needs him desperately. Brady's probably on the phone with him after every game going, Dude, I need you. Get here. Wentz, 20 for 40, not good enough. Ertz played well. Goddard played well. But the, the, the outside receivers are terrible. Aguilar's terrible. Arthiego Whiteside, not ready yet. Jordan Matthews, a jag. They were lost without Alshon Jeffrey, and they didn't run the ball enough with Miles Sanders. Got to run the ball more. All right, let's take a look at tonight's game. This is a big game for people. Do I need to tell you to start Patrick Mahomes? You start Patrick Mahomes. You start Tyreek Hill. You start Sammy Watkins. You start Travis Kelsey. Do you start Damien Williams? I think you do. I think he's going to play. I think he's going to play. If not, you start Darrell Williams in two seconds. Okay? You're starting Phillip Rivers. You're starting Gordon. You're starting Eckler. You're starting Allen. You're starting Hunter Henry. And yes, you are starting Mike Williams. I know Mike Williams has done nothing. But what are you going to do? Bench him at this point? You got to go all in on Mike Williams. This is a big high scoring game. It should be at least. So games are going to be won and lost tonight. If you need the points, I hope, I hope, I hope you get them. But right now it's time to put away the insurance cards, put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. Remember, you can catch me at FNTSY Radio from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern every day. All right. Of course, you can check me at fulltimefantasy.com. Enter the promo code ROTO50. We'll give you 50% off your first two months. This is Dr. Roto Sun. Be well and take care. Thanks for listening to Full Time Fantasy. There's never been a better time to join and go full time. Visit fulltimefantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO50 for 50% off your first two months. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time.